car so you can achieve a beautiful looking finish like this. Here we're back in the garage today with this Kia Sorento. And as you know, this video series started out with a nasty looking dent. We went ahead and glue pulled it, got the majority of the dent out, and then we used a hammer and dolly to shape it. We ground it, we filled it, we blocked it, and we got it into primer and ready for the next step. So let's dig in and get started. The first step in this process is to block and smooth out our primer. For that, we're gonna add a dry guide coat to the surface. This will show us any high or low areas and verify that our bodywork is nice and straight. The next step is to block out our primer. For that, we're gonna use the longest board possible that we can still hold flat against the panel. We'll be using 320 grit sandpaper and we'll block it in an X pattern. This will help us get that panel perfectly straight. This is where the time spent on the body filler and refining those body filler scratches really pays off because this panel is ready for the next step, which is the preparation. Next, I want to prepare the rest of this panel for paint and clear coat. Now remember, we're only painting the primered areas. We're blending the color out into the rest of the panel, and then we're going to clear this entire panel. But we need to prep those surfaces outside of that primered area for clear coat and paint. To do that, I'm using an 800 grit sanding sponge. This is a soft sponge that easily contours to those sharp body lines and hard to reach areas so I can get those sanded properly for good adhesion. We wanna knock off the shine of this panel. We want it to be nice and dull so we have good adhesion for our paint and our clear coat. Now you can use an orbital sander for this for the large areas. I would stay away from the body lines and those sharp edges because it's easy to burn through those. If you sand through while scuffing, then you're going to have to apply color to an area that might be outside of the repair area, and then you have to blend into the adjacent panels, and that could cause issues. I did sand back over some of the larger areas with an orbital sander and some 800 grit sandpaper. I like to smooth out the orange peel just a little bit to make sure it's nice and flat for when I apply my paint and my clear coat. Any any way I can make this panel flat and smooth, I want to do it to get the best results possible. So we have this panel all prepped out. Now I did break through a couple little areas in my primer. So rather than apply a sealer before I paint, because I have a tight blend area, I'm going to apply a thin coat of primer. But we want to cover those bare metal areas. This is a direct-to-metal primer, and I've thinned it out about 15%, so it's very thin. Because it's thin, it's just going to require a light sanding before we go ahead and paint and clear. Before I move on, I want to make sure this primer is nice and smooth. So I'm going to use 600 grit sandpaper on my orbital sander with an interface pad. I'll show you that in a minute. I am going to add a guide coat just so I can verify that this primer is smooth before we move on to the next step. I've got my orbital sander here. It has an interface pad on it. That's a soft foam pad that's going to move with the contours of the panel. This is going to help me to keep from breaking through that primer into bare metal. You don't have to use an interface pad. You don't have to use an orbital sander. You can do all this by hand. You could wet sand it with 600 or you can dry sand it with 600. The important thing here is to get that primer smooth. The smoother your primer, the smoother your paint and clear coat and the better results in your finished product. As you're sanding your repair, you always want to be looking for any scratches that you might have missed, any coarse scratches that you might have missed when you're prepping out your panel. Now is the time to correct those before you paint and before you clear. The next step is to clean your repair area. Now, I went ahead and cleaned this with some isopropyl alcohol. You can use isopropyl alcohol or wax and grease remover. That's an automotive cleaner. Removes any contaminants off the surface. We'll clean this several times before we paint. Not too much masking here. I just masked off the perimeter, back taping the edge of the lift gate. Now that I have the perimeter of this lift gate masked off, I'll use a gray scotch bright so I can sand right up against that adjacent panel. This is equivalent to an 800 or 1,000 grit scratch, and this is going to make sure I get all those edges sanded properly so we have good adhesion. I'll finish masking this for paint, and then we'll talk about the paint gun, the paint gun setup, clear coat, and how you can spray clear like a pro.
This is the paint gun I'm using today for my base coat. It's the Eastwood LT100. This gun requires only 3.25 CFMs of air pressure, so it's perfect for home use or for small compressors. It's going to produce less overspray and require less air pressure to run efficiently. The way I set this gun up is I have my air pressure set at 30 PSI. I have my fan pattern wide open, and then I have my volume three turns out from closed. I'm ready to spray now. I went ahead and tacked this panel off. I use a tack cloth to wipe it down. That's going to remove any dust particles that may have landed on this panel before, right before I paint. The paint I'm using today is the Nason XL. I find this to be a reasonably priced paint that has good coverage. And I picked this paint up at my local O'Reilly's. Our first coat of paint, we're going to apply a good medium to wet coat over just the primered areas. We want to be four to five inches away. We want to overlap 70% on our passes and have a consistent speed and a consistent distance from the panel at all times. After we let this set up for about 15 minutes, we want it to flash off and then we can apply our second coat. After your first coat, your paint should be nice and silky smooth before you apply your second coat. We'll go ahead and use the same techniques, four to five inches away, overlapping 70%, consistent speed, consistent distance, and put another medium to wet coat on. Now we're not concerned about our blend right now. We just want to get that primer covered so the paint is not transparent. After the second coat of paint, this primer is pretty much covered, but I'm going to go ahead and apply a third coat just as an insurance policy to make sure we have good coverage and are ready for some clear coat. This coat is where I'm going to blend out into the rest of the panel. So as you can see, I'm going past where the primer area is, around four to six inches. I'm As I'm going out away from the primer, I'm going to get away from the panel just a little bit farther, and that'll give us a nice transition into the old paint. One important tip here is you don't need a ton of paint for your blend. One to two coats and that is it. You're done. If you continually put coats on your blend area, you're going to have sand piling and this is going to create a roughness in your paint and that's going to show up under your clear coat and it's going to ruin your paint job. Your paint needs to be smooth after your blend. Just make sure that it's smooth and the transition is good and you'll be okay. Now we're ready for some clear coat, so we're going to tack this off once again after we've let it fully cure, which took about half an hour. But you can see how silky smooth this paint is, and that's what you want before you start applying clear. The clear coat I'm using today is the Finish One FC710. This is a really good quality clear at a budget price. It is a 4 to 1 clear, 4 parts clear coat, 1 part activator. The gun I'm using for clear coat is the Iwata Kiwami 4. I'm loving this gun. It produces a beautiful looking clear coat finish. Now the gun settings, I have the fan pattern turned wide open and then I turn it back half a turn. I have my volume wide open and my air pressure set at 28 PSI. You want to use the same techniques as painting when you're spraying your clear coat. You want to overlap 70%. You want to have a consistent distance and a consistent speed as you're spraying. You want to be about four to five inches away from the panel. I'm going a little bit slower here and I'm laying it on, but I'm not concerned about making it absolutely perfect on the first coat. We want to have a good base for our second coat because that's where we're really going to make this flow out and look beautiful. As simple as that on the first coat, it came out beautifully, flowed out well, but we're going to let this set up for about 15 minutes and then we'll apply our second coat. After applying the second coat, the finish came out beautifully. It's got a few minor imperfections, but we can easily cut and buff those out. Listen, if you want more information about how to do paint and body repair and contact me with any questions, check out the pinned video on my channel. I appreciate each and every one of you watching. We'll see you next time on Garage Noise.